What a Sunday for Niner fans. What a Sunday. Niners win. Can you believe the Cowboys win in the way that they did over the Philadelphia Eagles? Lions lose. And the Niners are at the top of the NFC standings at 10 and 3. Can you believe it, Niner fans? Shout out YouTube and Twitch streamers, Comcast Business Text Line, YouTube and Twitch, 888-957-9570. It's a monster Monday, and it's brought to you by First 5 California. To learn four things you can do to overcome toxic stress, go to first5california.com. And look, it wasn't a great weekend. Warriors, they blew a lead on Friday night. The show, hey, drama. Giants fans, I don't know. I didn't ever think he was going to come here. But he goes to the Dodgers, of all places. I needed my Niners to come. I needed my Niners to come through in a big way. I needed them to show up. I needed the Cowboys to show up. And think about where you were just a couple of weeks ago. A month ago, they were in the midst of a three-game losing streak. A month ago, we had no Trent, no Debo. It wasn't looking good. Brock Purdy had a couple of shaky fourth quarters. And since then, Brock Purdy has been absolutely lights out. Now, I didn't even think it was his best game yesterday. They had explosive plays left and right. But I thought he had a couple of underneath plays. A mm, little sketch. But then you look up and the guy makes the most of the opportunities. I mean, it's it's a six, it's a 21-16 game. 21-16. And you're thinking, oh boy, here we go. They got life. And they go for a two-point conversion, Drew Locke does. All right? Nick Bosa comes crashing in. They get a sack. They negate the two-point conversion. 21-16, they kick it off. Boom, they hit Debo. Little run for CMC. And then a beautiful seam route pass with beautiful touch in stride by Brock Purdy. And boom, kill shot, game over. Game over. Now, Look, I'd like to see the Niners put up 35. I'd like to see them put that team away. It was ugly. I didn't even think they had their best performance. Clearly, Seattle had a full 10 days rest. That's a divisional opponent. I thought Drew Locke had a little bit of juice. He was moving around. He was making plays. You lose Charvarius Ward in this game. You lose Javon Hargrave in this game. And we will monitor what's going to happen with those guys. But CMC starting that game off with a 72-yard run to just set the tone for the Niners. Do you have the 72-yard run? Can you play it for me right now in just a second? Because CMC, some of these stutter step plays that he had and the burst and the acceleration, the toughness, give me the first play. I sit down in my seats. I got little Charlie with me. I got Prince, their first ever 49er game. We'll get to that in a second. I sit down, and then, ah, 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 boom, CMC for 72 yards. And we start to Christian McCaffrey on the outside, makes a nice catch, and a lot of room. McCaffrey might go. Being chased, cuts back inside the 10, and he's down inside the 5. Unbelievable. Now, look, we can argue about if Purdy's the MVP, if CMC's the MVP, is it Trent Williams? I mean, we, look at when you're winning and you're 10 and 3, we can have all those discussions. But I, I just, the thing that I'm blown away with, we just beat the Seahawks back to back years and we swept them. Swept them. Swept them. Think about where we were with the Seahawks just a, 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 four or five years ago, just three years ago. Brock Purdy and four career stars for Seattle. Give it to me 1,126 passing yards, eight TDs. Two picks, a rushing touchdown, 113.2 passer rating, 4 now. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, this is just a domination for and, Brock Purdy. And, no and, one's on their level in the division. Uh, no, no. And and right now you're just looking up and you're saying to yourself, do you believe Detroit? Like, does anyone believe Detroit can win a game outside against a physical team like the Niners? Is it, no. And I'm not, look, Detroit is a year away. They're going to be a very good team. I think they're going to be a formidable foe. But come on. I got to see it first. Does anyone believe in the six and seven bucks? Now the Cowboys, I believe in. I don't think I don't think we're giving enough, you know, credit to the Cowboys as of right now. You want to say Dak Prescott's the MVP? I'll listen to that. Dak Prescott has been amazing. I mean, CeeDee Lamb dropped the ball early in that third quarter. Should have put that game away earlier. 
All right? And what is going on with those Philadelphia Eagles? I'm not ready to say the Eagles are done. I'm not ready to say that. But they got some things to figure out. They got some things to figure out. They absolutely have some things to figure out. Right now, this feels like the Niners' best chance to win a Super Bowl in forever. Number and one seed, everything goes through Levi's. Not to cut you off, Joe. And then you look at the other side because obviously the big picture here is Super Bowl. The one team that always seemed to have your number, that being the Kansas City Chiefs, they're in shambles right now. Well, you hate to see that. I'm not too. even, like, quite honestly, I'm not even looking at the AFC. I want to get through the NFC. That's fine. I, I'm, I'm looking from within, but I, I get in the, the head, point. though. You're not, alone. not that many, like, because going into the season, we thought. What it was the AFC's just a gauntlet, hundred percent. Right? Every the top to bottom, the quarterback play, what have you. Then all of a sudden, you look around. All of a sudden, everyone's getting hurt. You got Joe Flacco winning games for the Cleveland Browns, beating Trevor Lawrence. Like it's a war of attrition. Jake Browning, Zach Wilson looked good. Zach Wilson looked Are good. You kidding me? Like, like, and that was a huge missed opportunity for the kidding? Houston Texans. By the way, they I, could have won that. I know going away, but now it's looking like it's going to be the Jags. Uh, disappointing there, but the NFC all of a sudden. It's the Cowboys and the Niners, and I think those are the two best teams in all of football. I, I, I'm with you on that. And I, I look at the 49er defense, and obviously, Traverius Ward, they're going to need him. When I saw Isaiah Oliver out there, I go, oh, boy, here we go. Diamond Lenore, he, he dropped multiple interceptions yesterday. You, 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 you got to catch one of those, and I get it. You play DB for a reason. But the Niners defense, uh, I thought Drew Locke did a great job scrambling right, scrambling left. He's got a rocket arm. I don't know what he ends up being. I, I don't know. It's a one-game start. We will see. But he had a little something yesterday. They got away from DK after that first drive, and it felt like DK couldn't get it going. And DK Metcalf, I mean, look, DK, you're a very talented player. What a punk, though. Like, seriously, what a straight-up punk. All right, 888-957-9570. Brandon Ayuk, Niner fans, where the hell are you at? You're the number one seed. We're, 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 we're in Christmas time. I mean, if you haven't got your Christmas tree and you're like me and you're waiting to go get it because the house is completely disgusting and we had to clean up all weekend— it's Christmas time. You are hanging ornaments, and the Niners right now are at the top of the Christmas tree. Yay! Right now in the NFC. They are at the top of the Christmas tree, and I'm looking at it right now. Brock Purdy, I mean, just the guy is just outstanding. 27 attempts, 19 completions, 368 yards. Got sacked. I didn't think it looked the most comfortable. Like, it wasn't the greatest Brock Purdy game, but you look up, and it's explosive play after explosive play. I mean, listen to these wide receiver numbers. Debo Samuel, 7 for 149 in a touchdown. That beautiful 54-yard bomb where he didn't even break stride. I mean, yo, he's a dick and dunker. Yeah, as he's throwing Mahomes-like passes down the field in stride. What about Brandon Ayuk? 6 for 126. Doesn't even begin to tell the story. Brandon Ayuk's downfield blocking is... I don't know if he's the best blocker in the game at wide receiver... He's so underrated, criminally underrated. There were two CMC plays where he's blocking downfield and sealing off, whether it's Jamal Adams, Witherspoon early in that game, and Witherspoon walked off with an injury. And then George Kittle, three for 76. The Niners have four guys at the top of the receiving charts for themselves. They got one dude who went back-to-back 1,000-yard -back receivers in Brandon Ayuk. First time that's happened since 13-14 Anquan Bolden. Only the fifth time in 49er history that a 49er receiver, either tight end or receiver, has gone for 1,000 in back-to-back -back years. Absolutely incredible. This is not a pass-first offense. He, he's not some apex number one that they're fe uh, he, uh, he He could be a number one, but in terms of, like, feeding him 15 times a game, that's, that's not what this offense is designed. And you look up, and the guy has unbelievable efficiency. And I actually thought that the pass that Brock Purdy on the, I think, third drive, the deep in route, it's just beautiful timing between the two of them. And, and they were a little off on some of the some of the underneath stuff, but it got Purdy going and it got him feeling comfortable. Brandon Ayuk, outstanding performance yesterday. I, I just, I think that CMC, CMC not really featured in the passing game yesterday, only as a runner. You look up, CMC's leading the NFL in rushing. I don't know, just a cool 16 for 145. And if you want to take away that 72-yard run, fine. Okay, he's 15 for 75 yards. It's pretty efficient. It's pretty good against a divisional opponent that knows you want to set the tone. And so you, you kind of limit some of his touches in a wear and tear game. I mean, you, you've got it going on now. You got Arizona this week, and we know that they have the Ravens on Christmas. And you can now look at, look at the schedule. I think Philly is going to drop one more, at least one more. Who knows what the Dallas Cowboys 
but but I think you're sitting pretty right now. You can lose a game to an AFC opponent, Ravens, and I don't think it's going to hurt you that bad. And look, you want to play the seeding game? I'm here for it. Is the number two seed more important than the number one? I want the bye. I want the home games. Do you want to avoid the Philly-Dallas matchup in the second round? I think there's merit in that. I'll listen to it. Niner fans, where you at? Let's go out to line one. Step right up, no waiting. 888-957-9570. 49ers beat the Seahawks. Think about what they just accomplished. Seahawks, Eagles, Seahawks. And I did not think they played their best game yesterday, and they won going away. Going away. Step right up, no waiting line. What is this, Nick and Berkeley? Beautiful. Nick, what you got, buddy? Yes, yes. Man, all I know, Levi's was lit yesterday. The fans was hyped. Let me tell you something, man. To see them Eagles crying on the sideline last night was epic. Cry, Eagles, cry. Cowboys thumped them. They, the Eagles got lucky with that little victory they got over them. Man, check it out. We got to we got to have, hold the home field advantage down, man. We got to hold. We got to get that bye week. The fans deserve it. The players deserve it. We want to stay at home the entire time. And what I'm telling you right now, we're going to let the Cardinals have it. The Ravens having whoever else we got after that, man. Bring it on, man. We're, we're our defense is out there intimidating cats. Every team wants to fight us on the field now. These other teams, we're just punking them right now, man. Brock Purdy was dropping dimes yesterday. He was just laying the biscuit in the basket yesterday, man. He was just floating them in there, man, like butter, man. It was incredible, man. And our defense is balling, man. We're out there hitting hard. These cats don't even want to go across the middle with Green Law and Warner out there. I'm telling you. Warner. Let's go, Niner fans. Get hyped. We're, destiny is ours, man. <laughs> we're a, we're the top seed right now. We're, we got we to lock onto it like a pit bull. And the murder hornet defense was out there prowling yesterday. Let's go, Niners. I love it, Nick. I love it. And, and, and Brock Purdy. I mean, look. The, again, there was this, a sequence where they were stuck up against the end zone. And I, I just I didn't love some of the pass designs there. And, and we could lose our minds. But I look up, and they had 12 explosive plays. I mean, this is what I thought I was getting when they drafted Trey Lance. All of the explosive plays. But the, the, the irony is, is he's more efficient on a lot of the underneath stuff, which is why yesterday was a little confusing from Brock Purdy. He wasn't as clean on the underneath stuff, but he was perfect on the explosion plays. I mean, look at it right now. Brock Purdy, the most accurate deep ball passer in the NFL, on completion percentage over 20 yards. Purdy leads the NFL 63.5%. The next oh closest guy God. is C.J. Stroud at 58, Jared Goff at 54, Dak Prescott, who I think might be the MVP frontrunner, at 53, and two at 53. I mean, Brock Purdy has been unbelievable. And you want to say, oh, it's all about the weapons. Well, yeah, how many times have we seen a guy who has weapons not hit guys in stride? That Debo Samuel throw was absolutely brilliant. And you know what we haven't given credit for? The beautiful pocket that was created by this offensive line. I did not think Feliciano had his best game yesterday. There were a couple of, of big plays negated by a block in the back by Aaron Banks on the same play where Trent Williams had a hold that just killed a drive. Uh, I thought it was a really crummy call. Trent had fallen down. He didn't really do anything anyway. But Feliciano didn't have his best game, and they set up a perfect pocket on that deep ball to Debo Samuel. And Debo ran right by Jamal Adams and threw a perfect in-stride 50-yard bomb. 50-yard bomb. You can tell me all the things he's not, but what he is, calm, cool, collective, moves the pocket, smart, extremely accurate, and willing to go for the gusto over the top. If you allow a guy to go open over the top, Brock Purdy is going to hit it. This guy just wins. And when you compliment him with CMC and Debo Samuel and George Kittle and Brandon Ayuk, he has maximized the offense. How many quarterbacks in the league right now are going to maximize the offense the way he has? Stop telling me this guy ain't good. Let's go out to line three. 888-957-9570. Step right up. No waiting. Who we got? Who is this? This is Jay in Florida. Jay in Florida. Slow what you got on the Niners, baby? Hey, what's going on, Shasky? Happy Victory Monday. What a beautiful Victory Monday. How about that Mitch Wisnowski fake punt that got called back? How about that, huh? I know. I know. So I, I got a quick question for you. I, I want to know, do you feel the specialness? that's going on with this team. If you feel the same way 
I am. And let me elaborate. You know, we all want to wear, we talk about football players, if they have that dog in them. But I feel with our guys, they're like a wolf pack. And if you're a part wolf, they accept you as a pack. And I'm taking it like on the Thursday night game uh, for Thanksgiving. The way they these guys raided the table, the way Kittle ran back, brought the turkey back into the locker room. It's like if I eat, everybody on this team eats. Defensively, offensively, it doesn't matter. If you put out part of that wolf into you, you are accepted among packs. I thought Beagle Samuel and uh, Christian McCaffrey, at some point there was going to be some rift because, you know, Beagle was the man. CMC came in and now taking some of this spotlight. But no, they they love each other. They're, they see each other as wolves and they run as a pack. Well, think about this. I mean, with, with the two of them in the backfield moving around as much as they have, you make it easier for both guys. Like, think about in, in, in 2022, before they got CMC, anytime Debo lined up in the backfield, did a jet sweep in the backfield, the defense knew the ball was going to him. And if it wasn't going to him, he was going to get plastered anyway as a decoy. I am seeing a level. There was a play before they hit Kittle on the deep bomb. Again, it was 21-16. Purdy gets the ball. And the first play, just a little soft toss to Debo Samuel. He's got Bobby Wagner on him. And Bobby Wagner is a all-time linebacker. But he's ancient. And Debo ran right by him. If that play happens before CMC comes to the Niners, there's two guys bracketing Debo Samuel on that play. It is a one-on-one -on -one spectacular. And if you guard one of these guys one-on-one -on -one and you give them a step, Brock Purdy's going to hit him. How about the scramble? The scramble, rolling left, he sets his feet, he lets Ayuk get up over Julian Love, and he throws a perfect ball, putting enough air out in front of Ayuk as he catches it in stride. I don't know what more people need to see. Brock Purdy has been awesome. If he's not the MVP of the league, he's number two or number three. You want to go CMC? Fine. I think both of them deserve uh, to acknowledgement. 